Hi YouTube, this is Adrian and Bernard bringing you episode 6 which will be about the life of Jesus. It's a lecture given by Bernard. How you doing Bernard? Okay, how you doing? And uh, it's a lecture that Bernard gives and he's going to give it to us. He's going to share this with yeah. us. And uh, the, the title is Come and Hear What You Haven't Been Told Concerning the Life and Teachings of Jesus the Christ. It's a non-sectarian lecture. Now, it says Jesus the Christ. Most people know him as just Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ is a title. It was other individuals would call the Christ also. I think Christian would call the Christ and others. It's a title showing an evolutionary stage of a person who's in contact with the universe. Universal knowledge. Now they term it as cosmic consciousness person who reaches a certain level is somehow open like a um, to receive from a higher source knowledge from the universe so it's called cosmic consciousness now okay well I look forward to hearing about this it sounds very interesting I'm pretty sure our viewers are excited to hear about this as well and please uh, in this lecture you know leave us comments and uh, you know we'd love to hear uh, feedback Yes. And share this with others. Okay. While serving as an infantryman during the Korean War, I had two experiences that had a profound effect upon my thinking. One was the sighting of UFOs, and two, the witnessing of so much death. When I returned to the United States, I witnessed in a service club that I was in charge of a demonstration of mass hypnosis, where I saw a person do things that he was not able to do in his normal waking state. These three experiences provided the incentive for me to search for answers. From 1955 to 1961, I read books dealing with UFOs, which made me aware that we are not alone in the universe. I read books on the subject of death, which led me to the subject of reincarnation and karma, which gave me a greater understanding of the meaning of the soul. Of the three experiences, I had proof of only one, and that was UFOs. In 1961, I was in introduced and initiated into an order and began receiving the exceptional knowledge had by them. Over a period of time, I was initiated into three other organizations. Now, I will give you uh, what is meant by initiated in, in the Bible. It was said unto the disciples by Jesus, quote, unto you, meaning his select few, but he had it really 120 students, that's in the Bible, I'll get to that later. Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. And that's in Mark chapter 4, verse 11, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. Jesus' teachings were non-sectarian, and one did not have to give up their religious affiliations to receive them. A parable meaning is al parable is an allegory, story, tale, or fable. Allegory is said to be taken not, not literal, symbolic, a figure of speech. The King James Version, partner edition, means hidden truth. Webster's Dictionary, mystery something hidden from human knowledge, and fitted to inspire a sense of awe, something intentionally hidden. Robert Young, an eminent authority in the analysis of words and terms used by the writers of the books of the Bible, says in his book titled, Analytical Concordance to the Bible, that the word mystery, as used in the New Testament by the writers of the Gospels, meant Quote, that which is known only to the initiated. I am a firm believer in a divine creator, and that this creator is the intelligence in everything. The information contained in this lecture is of a non-sectarian nature, as was the teachings of the great master Jesus, it has been gathered from the King James Version of the Bible, the Talmud, from the Apocrypha Gospels, which contain stories about the Father, 
Mary and James, the brother of Jesus. Also from two books titled The Mystical Life of Jesus and The Secret Doctrines of Jesus. Written by Dr. H. Spencer Lewis, former imperator of the Rosicrucian Order. And others that will be mentioned as we go along. Dr. H. Spencer Lewis was a fellow of the Essene Ashrama in India. Also American legate of the Great White Brotherhood in Tibet. Not meaning race. The term, oh, the term Great White Brotherhood or Great White Law does not allude to a fraternal organization actually in existence by that name anywhere. Rather, it represents a body of mystical and esoteric doctrines, which are the result of the wisdom of many enlightened minds throughout the centuries. Most all such enlightened individuals had been affiliated with great mystical orders such as the Rosicrucians. Therefore, the body of teachings, rites, and rituals, not individuals, became known as the Great White Brotherhood. Dr. A. Spencer Lewis had many honors bestowed upon him and had been received into many, into the highest degrees of 14 or more of the leading esoteric, mystical, and philosophical societies of the world. I have found, through my experiences, that to find out whether there is any truth to sources of information gathered, one must research diligently in an unbiased manner, and what one must not limit the source from which it comes. Truth is truth, regardless of its source. To accept, without question, the written or spoken word is dangerous, for one can easily be deceived, as is being done today, and unknowingly wrongfully led, as is being done today. To those who in orthodox sincerity feel they have been told all concerning the life and teachings of the great master Jesus by their religious leaders and are content with that, well and good. But to those who feel there is something missing and want to know more, go and search for it. You will find it most rewarding. I would like to quote from a book titled My Encounters with the Light by Miles D. Ferguson. It reads in part, quote, I have heard that many people in many parts of Europe and the East believe that the Master Jesus is buried in a tomb in Kashmir and that the Mother Mary is buried in Pakistan. When I became a member of the Unitarian, Unitarian Church, I, ran, I was introduced rather to a lady for the first time who was from India. When we, we started to, to discussing certain, certain things about India, Jesus, and things like that, she told me she visited the tomb of Jesus. Just she said to me. As of 1998, several scholarly books were in wide circuit which allude to the possible secret burial of Jesus as being in the Languedoc region of France. Their authors claim he and his wife, best known as the biblical Mary Magdalene, raised a family. At the present time, some of the most powerful religions in the world don't want their followers to find out that Jesus and Mary were Essenes and that Jesus did not die on the cross. They want this information suppressed and they are spending vast sums of money to do so. Otherwise, they may, might lose control of their followers who would find out that they have been preaching false doctrines for hundreds and hundreds of years, unquote. <clears throat> there is a book titled The Mystical Life of Jesus by H. Spencer Lewis giving facts regarding the Essene Brotherhood, facts that were not known publicly until the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered 17 years later. Chapter 1, titled The Mystery of the Essenes, reads in part, quote, this was 17 years before the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. The possible relationship of the Essene Brotherhood to the early Christian activities has not only aroused the interest of hundreds of eminent churchmen and biblical authorities, but it has caused one question to be asked by thousands of students of mystical literature. Why has the history 
or story of the Essenes been withheld from general knowledge? The answer is, those who knew the story desired to keep the Essene Brotherhood shrouded in mystery to protect its work and teachings from being publicly discussed and eventually scoffed at by those students or professors of Orthodox Christianity who have labored so diligently to make even a greater mystery of Christ and Christianity. Unquote. The Rosicrucian records have always had extensive details of the activities of the Essene Brotherhood and no initiate of the Rosicrucian order or profound student of the ancient records was ever left in ignorance regarding the Essenes. The Rosicrucian archives in foreign lands embracing the records of the Essenes, the Nazarenes, the Nazarites, as well as the complete records of the Great White Brotherhood in Tibet, India, and Egypt have always been sources of knowledge for the worthy inquirer into the history of all avatars and especially into the history of Jesus. It is from this dependable source that all the facts contained in this book have been drawn. In the first place, it would be sufficient in this brief outline of their organization to say that the Essenes were a branch of the Illuminated Brotherhood or Great White Lodge, which had its birth in the country of Egypt during the years preceding Akhenaten, Pharaoh of Egypt, and the great founder of the first monotheistic religion who supported and encouraged the existence of a secret brotherhood to teach the mystic truths of life. Unquote. From another book titled Rosicrucian Questions and Answers with Complete History by Dr. A. Spencer Lewis, Ph.D., reads in part, quote, Notable among the phase, phases of the spread of the work of the Rosicrucians to other lands was the establishment of two branches known as the Essenes and the Therapeutae. The, Essese the Essenes constituted that branch which went into Palestine and adopted a distinct name in order to veil its preliminary work while the Therapeutae was a similar branch established for the same purpose in Greece. In Palestine, the Essenes established a community of members and associate members at Galilee, where they had many homes in this non-Jewish Gentile part of the country, built their principal monastery and temple on top of Mount Carmel, where Elijah, as one of the descendants of the Great White Brotherhood, had previously established a retreat and had taught many of the mysteries of the Brotherhood. The birth of Jesus in a family of Gentiles, living in the Essene community at Galilee, fulfilled the expectations of the Brotherhood. And from this time on, the outer and inner activities of the Brotherhood became centered around the ministry of the great Master Jesus. Jesus was born of Gentile parents through whose veins flowed Aryan blood. Original Aryans were both Egyptians and Hindus. They came from the continent of Atlantis. Only a few exist today living in Tibet <coughs> and South America. The Essenes were not Jews by birth, by blood, or by religion, and were often referred to as Gentiles in many of the sacred writings, even in the Christian Bible. Unquote. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 15, it reads, quote, Galilee of the Gentiles. The parents of Jesus lived in Galilee, and therefore Galileans. Many orders came into existence under the leadership of certain masters, such as the Essenes, the Therapeutae, the Co Covenators, the Magi, the Order of Melchizedek, the Order of Arya Sangha, the Good Samaritans, and many others. Their purpose was to enlighten and advance the civilizations of different nations. During the lifetime of Jesus, he was referred to by the Jews as the Nazarene. In Abhuda Zara 6a of the Jewish Talmud, Jesus is called the Nazarene. A Nazarene, according to the Jewish records, was a sect of primitive Christians. Even John the Baptist was called the Nazarene. In the Christian Bible, we find many other references to persons who were known as Nazarenes. In Acts 26, chapter, verse 5, 
we find a man condemned as being a mover of sedition among the Jews throughout the world and called a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Acts 26, 5, reads, oh, I said that, oh. okay. According to the book titled The Mystical Life of Jesus, it reads, Whenever the Jews came into contact with one in their country who had a different religion, and especially a mystical understanding of the things of life, and it was living in accordance with some code of philosophical or moral ethics that was different from those of the Jews, he was called a Nazarene for the want of a better name. There was a definite sect called the Nazarene, and we find them referred to in the Jewish records as primitive Christians. Or in other words, those who were essentially prepared for and ready to accept the Christian doctrines. Jerome, the famous biblical authority, referred to the fact that in his day there still existed among the Jews in all the synagogues of the East a heresy condemned by the Pharisees and the followers of it were called Nazarenes. I don't want to take too long, so I'm going to skip some things. Alright, I'll read this. There was another term for such heretics among the Jews, and that was Nazarite. According to the Jewish authorities, the term Nazarite was applied to those who lived apart or separate from the Jewish race because of some distinctive religious, moral, or ethical belief. The Jewish records state that such persons were often those who would not take wine or drink anything made from grapes, or those who would not touch the, the dead during any funeral ceremony. The same records state that the history or origin of Nazareth's ship in ancient Israel is obscure. They state that Samson was a Nazarite, as was his mother. They distinctly say that there are references to the fact that Jesus was said to have been dedicated to the Nazarites while still in the womb. The Jewish records say that St. Luke, I'm sorry, the Jewish records say that St. Luke 115 refers to this dedication. It reads, quote, For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall not drink either wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from even from his mother's womb. That's a little, I could, could have left it out. The term Nazarites and Nazarenes had nothing to do with a city or town called Nazareth. It's plainly indicated by many historical records. I, as a Mason, was, went to a, a, a supply, a Masonic Supply Bureau, downtown Manhattan. I went into the building to get something. I saw a huge map on the wall. It had before Christ, B.C., during his life, and after his life. It was original as the towns were at that time. I looked before his life, I saw no town called Na Nazareth. During his life, no town called Nazareth. After his life, Nazareth was there. And that was added a, a century or more after his passing. So why do you think they, they put there Jesus of Nazareth? Because the historians, when the historians came along and started writing about these things afterward, this town, a town was called Nazareth, and they assumed that he was a part of that town. I mean, like, I know the Bible, they mm. said that uh, there have been a lot of hands in that book. Oh, yes, yes, quite a few. And the book was written sometime, a long time after, after his death. Yes, right, right. Maybe that could be a reason yes, why? Yes, sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, you can That's continue. right, that's right. I just mm. wanted to add that mm. Oh, the term Nazarite and Nazarene had naught to do with the city or town called Nazareth is plainly indicated by many historical records. It is well known that Elijah was a Nazareth, Nazarite and an Essene, and that both the Jewish and Roman Catholic records refer to him as such. A very small settlement called En Nazaro was found far from the Sea of Galilee, and this was immediately renamed Nazareth. This town was discovered in the 3rd century after Christ. Turning to the old Jewish records, we find these state that only in the books of the New Testament written long after the lifetime of Jesus is the town of Nazareth mentioned as a village in Galilee, and that such a place is not mentioned in the Old Testament. 
in the historical writings of the Jewish historian Josephus, nor in the Talmud. To understand why Jesus is referred to as Jewish by the writers of the New Testament, we have to go back to ancient Egypt and come forward. The word Israelite, as applied to the tribes in Egypt, did not mean to imply that they were of the Jewish faith. Eminent 3rd century B.C. Egyptian historian Manetho, who was a master of the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics and others, <clears throat> have not found any reference to the word Jew in any of the authentic ancient records before or during the exodus of the tribes from Egypt. Also, the word Israel was a holy name of Egyptian origin and was derived from three Egyptian personalities. Really? If we separate the word Israel into three parts, we have I-S, R-A, and E-L. The I-S comes from the word Isis. She was supposed to be a virgin who gave birth, I think, to Horus. I'm not sure now. There is in Egypt, recorded in stone long before the birth of Jesus, all right, I was right. A story of a virgin by the name of Isis giving birth to a son named Horus. The word Ra comes from a person bearing that name. Another story recorded long before the Christian era of a virgin by the name of Queen Martmus, I guess I'm pronouncing right, giving birth to a son named Ra. The story is very old. The E-L comes from an Egyptian by the name of Moria E L Moria L, the illustrious. He was called the illustrious. He established the principle of baptism as a spiritual step in the process of initiation. He was born in Egypt around 1385 B.C. He made a certain lake famous by the ceremony he conducted there as a representative of the Great White Lodge. The lake is called Lake Morius in Egypt. The, is, the word Israelite was a title of nobility. Ancient scrolls discovered in Tibet sometime around 1748 were translated and became a book titled Unto Thee I Grant. Reads in part, quote, The tribes when leaving Egypt did so under the guidance of Pharaoh Amenhotep the fourth, not Moses, who later changed his name to Akhenaten. Every authority on the history of religions points to him as the first man in the civilized world to proclaim the belief in one God. Unquote. He is considered the first grand master of a secret brotherhood which founded such schools as the Essenes to which the master Jesus belonged and which later evolved into a fraternity known as the Brethren of the Rose Cross or the Rosicrucians referred to by Lord Bulwer Lytton in his book, Zanon, Zanoni, I guess that's how you pronounce it, and by many others who have given time to such research, including Sir Francis Bacon, author of Shakespeare, who at one time was chief executive of the order of the Rosicrucians throughout continental Europe. Recent translations of the writings on the walls and columns in Akhenaten's temple this was, um, he had changed his name, Amenhotep IV, to Akhenaten. Recent, Akhenaten. recent translations of the writings of, on the walls and columns in Akhenaten's temple in Egypt show, for instance, that he was the author of those beautiful passages which are incorporated in the Christian Bible as the 104th Psalm. In giving this lecture, I had maps. So I, I, I have something to describing, asking the people to look at the maps to the places that I'm going to mention. So I won't do that here. But the tribes, after leaving Egypt, united in a place called Edom. They had, during their stay in Edom, three kings. The first king was King Saul. It is said, to, it is said he committed suicide. The second king was David. The third king, Solomon. He became king when David became too old to reign. Solomon in his youth traveled to Egypt to obtain entrance into the mystery schools. I will briefly quote from a book titled Rosicrucian Question and Answers with Complete History. Quote, about 1000 BC, there came to Egypt a character whose name is recorded as Solomon. 
but it was later identified in later years with Solomon. He had traveled from the west to the east in search of light, light meaning knowledge. He reached El Amarna on the fourth day of June in Egypt, 999 BC, under the name of Solomon, the youthful seeker. He did not complete his studies, for it is reported that he left El Amarna before the fourth examination. He was there till 952 BC. After leaving Egypt, he completed the temple in Palestine in which to house a society or brotherhood such as he had found at El Amarna. It was found that Solomon restricted his order to males and adopted a great many of the details of the Rosicrucian initiations and services. At first it was believed that he would apply to the Grand Lodge in Thebes, Egypt, for a charter and make his work a branch of the Rosicrucians, but it became apparent before the first assembly was held that he was not adhering to the Rosicrucian philosophy, for he used the sun as the exclusive symbol of his order. Of the growth of the Solomon Brotherhood, as it was officially called in all ancient documents, one may, one may read in all literature bearing upon Freemasonry. It has evolved into a semi-mystical, speculative, secret fraternal order of power and great honor, gradually altering the principles laid down by Solomon. It has changed a great deal. After the death of Solomon, the tribes scattered into two fragments, north and south. Ten went to Samaria north and two to Judah south, later to be called Judea. According to the Masonic Comprehensive Bible Dictionary, the word Jew was first applied to the members of the new state Judah. If we turn to two books called Maccabees, that's a G J J U D A. Okay. Eventually came Judea, J U D E A, I think it was. Okay. If we turn to two books called Maccabees of the Old Testament Apocrypha, it tells the story of the Maccabees or Hasmoneans, Jewish rulers of the second and first centuries BC. It was written before 70 AD. If we turn to the first book of Maccabees, chapter 5, verse 15, 134 BC, Judas Maccabeus, leader of the Jews, tells Simon, his brother, to rescue all the Jews who were in Galilee. Simon took 3,000 men into Galilee where he fought many battles with the so-called heathens and the Jews living in Galilee with their wives and children were brought safely into Judea. Galilee was now a land of Gentiles. From the King James Version of the Bible, partner edition, it reads, In 134 B.C., Simon and two sons were murdered by an ambitious son-in-law. A third son, John Hyrcanus, managed to escape and succeed his father, as hereditary head of the Jewish state. Certain cities that had been relinquished before his reign were quickly seized by Hyrcanus with the addition of Edomia, Edom, Edom, Edomia and it became Judean territory. Hyrcanus compelled the Edomians to become circumcised and accept the Jewish faith. Both Hyrcanus, before Hyrcanus died in 104 BC, the borders of Judea had been extended on every side. The people living in Judea started taking land from other people. Hyrcanus' death precipitated a dynastic struggle among his children. His eldest son, who, referred, who preferred his Greek name Aristobulus to his Jewish name Judah, emerged as victor and cast three of his brothers into prison. Two are said to have died of starvation. Aristobulus pushed the borders of Judea north to Mount Lebanon and took the title of king to himself, first king of the Jews. It was Aristobulus, first king of the Jews, who forced all the Gentiles living in Galilee to adopt circumcision and accept the Mosaic law. In accordance to this law, all children at a certain age had to accept the Jewish faith in a formal way by appearing at the synagogue for probational admission to the church. Therefore, from 164 B.C. to 103 B.C., Galilee remained a land of Gentiles. This included the grandparents and parents of Jesus. They became Jews in name only through forced adoption. The disciples also lived in Galilee. The grandparents of Jesus, Anna and Joachim, how have you pronounce that, were of the tribe of Levi. 
From the Apocrypha, titled The Gospel of the Birth of Mary, it reads, quote, In the primitive ages there was a gospel extant bearing this name, attributed to St. Mart- Saint Matthew, and received as genuine and authentic by several of the ancient Christian sects. It is said to be found in the works of Jerome, a father of the church, who flourished in the 4th century A.D., from whence the present translation is made. His contemporaries, Ficinius, Bishop of Salamis and Austin, also mention the gospel under this title. The ancient copies differed from Jerome's, for from one of them, the learned Faustus, a native of Britain, who became British of Rees, a province, in province, endeavored to prove that Christ was not the Son of God till after his baptism, and that he was not of the house of David, and the tribe of Ju- and the tribe of Judah, because according to the gospel, he cited the virgin herself was not of this tribe, but of the tribe of Levi, his father being a priest of the name of Jeho- Jehoiakim. Now, was Jesus really born in a manger? Luke, in chapter 2, 7, says he was born in a manger. But Matthews, in chapter 2, 11, says that he was born in a house. There's a big difference between a house and a stable. There is ample evidence to show that he was born in a cave designed like a house. Eusebius, 260 to 340 A.D., said that he was born in a cave according to in a cave. According to the Encyclopedia of Catholic History, Eusebius was so-called father of church history, one of the most important of all church historians, and Bishop of Caesarea, how you pronounce that. He was born in Palestine and remains the most important source for the history of the church from its beginning until the fourth century. Tertullian, 160 to 22 AD, said that he was born in a cave. According to the Encyclopedia of Catholic History, Tertullian is considered the first true theologian of the West. He is distinguished as the first Christian author to compose chiefly in Latin. Tertullian Tertullian today is recognized as a figure of true genius and lasting import. St. Jerome, 342-420 A.D., says he was born in a cave. According to the Encyclopedia of Catholic History again, he was a doctor of the church and biblical scholar known in full as Eusebius Hieronymus. Hieronymus. Quite ironic that uh, coincidence that they were mm. all... All said he was born in a cave. Only one person said it, and that was Luke. And Luke, I don't know whether he was really a disciple, but I'm not sure. I heard that he wasn't. But He was born in Striden. This person, uh, Jerome, St. Jerome, was born in Striden near what they call Aquilia, Italy. He is considered one of the greatest scholars of the early church. If we turn to the gospel, the Protovangelion of the Apocrypha, written by James, a brother, a flesh brother of Jesus. Chapter 12, verses 13. We find Joseph, his two sons, 